before I get started, I'll put on some, some of these gloves in a bottle, which is wonderful stuff. Keeps my hands safe from any chemical that might be going on. Hi, my name is Dan Nelson. I'm here to give you another free art lesson. Good to have you with me today. I want to introduce you to a watercolor technique that I stumbled upon actually about three or four months ago and uh, I just want to share it because it's I've never seen anybody else do it and it's been kind of fun. I have here an example of a finished piece that I did up in New York City and uh, this was done on plein air on location and uh, it basically involves doing several sketches with a watercolor pencil and then doing a archival felt tip pen on top of that and then watercolor on on top of the drawing. There's several things about the technique that make it really easy to use and I want to demonstrate those for you as I go along. I usually begin by drawing in a light colored pencil. This time I'm using a yellow ochre. I should say first of all what image I'm going to do and again my by far my preference is to work on plein air but can't do that in a studio so here we are. I'm going to work from a photograph. This is a picture I took in uh, southern France uh, a couple months ago of two children, darling children coming down the stairs and I'm going to do that. Just a word about working from photographs. Uh, it's never as good as working from real life, of course, but there are many times we have to work from photographs. Make sure, if you can, that they're your photographs. There are a couple reasons for that. One is copyright infringement. The other is if you took the photograph, then the, the picture, as I took this picture, it's a reminder of the whole moment, the whole environment. I can put myself back in this moment and feel what the space and so on. If someone else took the photograph, you don't have all that information. Does that make sense? So it's often a good idea to take the photograph yourself and work from your own photographs. Okay, I've gotten into the habit just for fun of uh, drawing a border around the page. And you can see I'm using my fingers as a guide. This is like a cheater straight edge one way to get a straight line without having a ruler with you, which is often the case when you're working on plein air. And I know you really can't see much of what I'm drawing. I'm drawing so light. So let me just uh, tell you that I'm, I'm going to try to indicate the, the very, very simple shapes in the drawing in this light color. Now, because you can't see that, I'm going to switch to, I've always wanted to do this, like a cooking show, you know how they mix something up, then they put it in the oven, watch this, cough, boom, woohoo, it's already all done, <laughs> I have the yellow drawing is completely finished, now I'll let you zoom in on that and see if you can see that, I think you probably can. After I've finished a drawing, in this case in yellow ochre, then I come back with a darker color and the color that I choose is very, very arbitrary, almost any color would work. Today I'm going to use orange. I've got much of the drawing here in place, but now I can come in and make corrections and refinements anywhere where I see that uh, changes need to be made and more detail can be added. The traditional, perhaps a more traditional approach to watercolor is to do an, a drawing in graphite, in pencil. Then you're left with the question of do you erase the pencil or do you leave it? When you do your drawings, underdrawings in watercolor pencil, you rarely have to erase. You can if you want to. They erase a little bit. But here's the real advantage. If your drawing is done in color, you can just leave it there and the, the color of the pencil becomes a part of the final product. Okay, I'm going to do that wonderful cooking show trick again. Will you hang on? I've already drawn, look at this, a drawing in orange. Man, this is a great way to do art. I love it. Third stage, after I've done the drawing in a couple different colors, I come back with this is a, a permanent pen sticks number 4017F made by Alvin, indeed. Now I come back and draw the entire thing again, this time in black. It may be worthwhile for me to mention the nature of the line, the, the type of line that I'm using, you'll notice I'm not using a straight edge, of course, and you'll also notice that my lines are anything but straight. 
I like to say that the, the, the goal of creating good art is to make interesting marks. You want marks that look like a human being made them. That's why I don't use a straight edge in this case. You want marks that look like they were drawn uh, easily with fluidity of motion. Now here's the real advantage of this fun technique that I've stumbled upon. I've drawn it one time in yellow ochre, a second time in orange, now a third time in black pen. That means I've already made most of my mistakes. I've already made most of my decisions and I can draw confidently knowing where each line should go without getting, either making big mistakes or without getting all tight. You know what I mean? When you're, when you're worried about if this, does this line go here, then you get tight and slow and careful and you lose the uh, nice fluid line that I enjoy anyway in, in my drawings. So once again, that would continue uh, drawing an outline in black and guess what? I've already done that as well. So here we go. The whole thing is now finished in a black outline. That is so fun to do. I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> Next stage of the process is I do traditional watercolor on top of this drawing. Now here's one of the neat things that happened. You can see, can't you, that there's the yellow is showing through and the orange is showing through. If there are any lines that I really don't like, then I can come in and I can scumble them out. But that really doesn't happen very often because I find that the underdrawing, the drawing in yellow, the drawing in orange, add a lot of character to the final, to the final piece. Now I'm going to traditional watercolor. When I do this outside on plein air, I have a, a small watercolor kit. Maybe I should have brought that here. Uh, but when I'm in the comfort of a studio, of course, I can use my normal watercolor tray, which is just a little bit easier to work with. I'm more familiar with it. At this point, I'm doing what I would call fairly traditional watercolor. Um, sometimes uh, using a, often using a big brush and doing washes, letting the, wa the watercolors run together just like you already know how to do probably from if you've done any watercolor at all. I'm going to do just a few more minutes of this and let you watch me. I think you've got the idea. One of the fascinating things that happens when you use this technique of doing the underdrawing in watercolor pencil is that the color that you use, the colors that you use for the underdrawing peek through all around the painting when it's finished. That is to say, it has the same effect of, a, uh, of the toned canvas, doing a painting on a toned canvas. Have you ever done that? Where perhaps if you're in oil painting, like you paint the whole canvas bright red and then do a landscape on top of it. Well, those little bits of red show through all over and unify the canvas. It's a very pleasant uh, appearance. The same thing is happening or a similar thing is happening here when I leave the watercolor pencil to show through, in this case, that orange and that uh, yellow ochre appear throughout the entire piece, giving it a unified look. I don't think I need to finish this painting for you. You've got the idea. The rest of it is, is, is painting in a very traditional way, like any watercolor. But the use of the watercolor pencil, I think, is a neat trick. Hope that's fun for you. Feel free to visit me on my website, dannelsonart.com, and I hope you'll join me again for another free art lesson. Thank you much. Bye-bye.